As the Democratic field has consolidated down to just a very few, the press has adopted the habit of attacking the party's voters, suggesting they're sexist, letting the race come down to two white men. You know, no country for old men. It seems like it is a country for old men. It's no country for women presidential candidates. Voters only have two men to choose from, two older white men to choose from. This historically diverse field of candidates has now come down to two white guys, two old white guys. The White House will once again be occupied by a white man. The Dem primary is now down to two white men. It's hard to not notice that. Three old white men and no ladies. These really are the worst people on the planet on television. Imagine if they were saying about any other group, and they're lying anyway. From the beginning, the press and the DNC have colluded to shut out an actual woman running for president. That would be Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard of Hawaii. Why? Because she has the same view of Middle Eastern wars that Howard Dean had in 2004 when he ran for the Democratic nomination. Another Democratic debate is scheduled for this weekend, but Gabbard will not be there. The party changed the rules specifically to keep her out despite the fact she picked up a delegate on Super Tuesday. Meanwhile, the DNC reportedly is considering another rule change so that Joe Biden is allowed to sit during the debate rather than stand. We'll see. Either way, Congresswoman Gabbard joins us tonight. Congresswoman, thanks so much for coming on. So what do you make of this? I mean, you must have the television on. You walk through an airport and you're a captive to <laughs> CNN for a minute and you hear people say, there are no women in the race. And you're thinking, well, I'm in the race. Right here. What do you make of this? Hi. Hi. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. It's, it's happened uh, uh, more than once where, yes, walking through airports or happen to see a television on. And uh, it, it is it is actually a disservice to the voters, really, is, is what's happening here, is they're disrespecting the voters in this country and their ability to make the best informed decision about who they would like to see move forward as a Democratic nominee. And, and it really begs the question, why are they doing this? Why is the political elite in Washington, their corporate media partners, why are they continuing to try to erase my candidacy, to try to stop voters from hearing the message that I'm continuing to bring to the forefront that began the very first day that I, that I announced my candidacy for president, this attempt to black out or smear my campaign, my character, my candidacy. It's really not a mystery. Why I'm running for president is to bring about a sea change in our foreign policy, a sea change that says we will end these wasteful regime change wars, stop going around the world trying to be the world's police toppling dictators, work to end this new Cold War and nuclear arms race, all of which are not making us any safer and instead redirect sure. our taxpayer dollars actually towards serving the needs of the American people here at home. Things like dealing with the coronavirus, things like investing in, in education and in health care, affordable housing. There are such urgent needs that people have. This is the change that I seek to bring about. It's not a mystery. This is why I'm running for president. The American people deserve to know why those in power don't want them to hear this message. It's, it was meeting with Assad, which I thought was great. I mean, I don't, you know, Assad, whatever, I'm not endorsing Assad, but he did protect religious minorities, including Christians. I'm a Christian. Christian leaders yes. in the region say that. You have a right to make that point. They haven't let you make that point or any point. They just dismiss you because of that. It, well, I, we don't have much time, but I'm just interested, like, why, what is that about? It's bizarre. It, it is, it is a, a dangerous situation that we are in that so many people here in Washington who are part of this powerful elite, who have this stranglehold over the foreign policy establishment, are so afraid of diplomacy and they cast out people like me who are calling for a foreign policy yes. focused on cooperation and diplomacy rather than confrontation uh, as something weird or bad or to, to be suspicious of. When you look at so many leaders throughout our country's history who have made those tough yep. decisions to exercise diplomacy to prevent our country from unnecessarily going to war. Well, exactly. It was brave. And you should be rewarded for bravery, but you've been vilified. Congresswoman Gabbard, thanks so much for joining us. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you.